Welcome everyone. I am Yashasani Basagwena, junior resident of Department of Radio Diagnosis, studying in KSEGDA Medical Academy. And I'm here to present my paper uh, on the topic of CT pulmonary angiography and well score evaluation of pulmonary embolism. Coming to the aim of the study, it is to correlate pulmonary angiography findings with well score in predicting the pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism is the third leading cause of cardiovascular related deaths with the prevalence of pulmonary embolism in the hospitalized individuals is 15 to 26%. Clinically, the patients might present with dyspnea, chest pain, syncope, shock or hypertension. And the clinical diagnosis is uh, difficult and there is a WELLS criteria which helps us to assess the risk stratification based on the uh, clinical symptoms in patients probably with acute uh, pulmonary embolism and uh, his, uh, for which history and examination is necessary. Diagnosis of pulmonary embolism is, includes ventilation perfusion scanning, contrast enhanced uh, CT arteriography, MR imaging and standard pulmonary arteriography. The multi-detector CT arteriography is the imaging modality of the choice and has the highest sensitivity and specificity for detecting emboli in the main lobar and segmental pulmonary arteries. In addition, this can also detect pulmonary arterial hypertension and abnormalities of perfusion as well. Uh, methods, uh, we have conducted a retrospective study on 41 patients who had clinical suspicion of pulmonary embolism and all the patients had uh, CT pulmonary angiography done in KSHD Medical Academy. Coming to the CT protocol, it was done in G revolution, revolution machine, 128 slides. And plain and arterial phase was done with 1.2 mm axial section taken through apices of the lung to the lower border of the uh, liver and multiplanar reformats were obtained. MIP and VR images were also obtained for pulmonary artery and iota. Coming to well score, based on the clinical features, all the patients were assigned well score and were classified into low, intermediate and high risk. Low risk was a patient with 0 to 2 points. Intermediate was a patient with uh, 3 to 6 points and high risk is more than 6 points. Coming to the <clears throat> results, uh, among the total patients, 39 patients had a high clinical suspicion of uh, uh, CT pulmonary angiography and two were having clear, less clinical suspicion of CT uh, sorry, pulmonary embolism. And the age group of uh, the patients who had clinical features were ranging from 25 to 78 years. And the frequency uh, of pulmonary angiography in, sorry, pulmonary embolism in our study was uh, 20, 25 people had uh, pulmonary embolism, which was corresponding to 61%, while 16 patients did not have embolism, which was corresponding to 39%. Out of, out of these patients who had pulmonary embolism, 15 uh, patients were male, that is 60% of them were male, males and 40% were females. And uh, among the patients who had pulmonary embolism, 56% of the patients had acute embolism and 44% of the patients had chronic embolism. Here, we can see a 54-year-old male patient who had presented with history of DVT, whose uh, CT axial images show a chronic uh, uh, thrombus noted in the left interlobar artery. Coming to the second image, there is a 53-year-old female who presented with sudden onset of breathlessness whose CT axial images show an eccentric thrombus which is seen in the right and left pulmonary arteries and these, this thrombus has seen extending into the segmental arteries as well. Uh, and coming to the correlation with the uh, well score, uh, and then the well score was given as three. Uh, well, well, three patients had a well score of low risk. 18, 18 patients had the well score of intermediate or high risk, and uh, 20 patients had uh, uh, high, high risk. So, uh, on CT pulmonary angio, the patients who had uh, uh, low risk did not have any embolism, whereas the patient, among the 18 patients, 50% of the patients with intermediate risk had. Uh, pulmonary embolism and among 20% of the patients, 15 patients had uh, uh, embolism in high risk category. The most common clinical presentation was dyspnea or breathlessness, which was seen uh, in uh, 30 patients out of 44, amongst which 73% uh, of the patients had embolism. 
14 patients in our study had deep vein, deep vein thrombosis or had a previous history of DVT, out of which only nine patients had embolism. So coming to DVT and its correlation with pulmonary embolism, uh, patients who had DVT and having pulmonary embolism was 36% of the patients and 64% of the patients who had pulmonary embolism did not have DVT. Based on the location, uh, the most common site for embolism in our study was the segmental arteries followed by right and left pulmonary arteries. 58% of the patients had thrombus in the segmental arteries. Also, multiple central, segmental and subsegmental arteries were seen in 12% of the patients. Coming to the secondary features or other associated features which were observed in our study in patients who had embolism was right ventricular hypertrophy, mosaic continuation, pulmonary arterial hypertension, and pleural effusion, among which 65% of the patients with pulmonary embolism had right ventricular hypertrophy and pulmonary arterial hypertension. Coming to the imaging findings of CTP, uh, pulmonary embolism on CTP in our study where one was polumen sign. Polumen sign is nothing but a central filling defect with peripheral, uh, peripheral contrast yielding a polumen sign. These are the images showing the polymer sign. Coming to the second image, on the left side, there is it, it is a it is a 64 year old male who had a clinical suspicion of pulmonary embolism. Whose CT axial images show a central filling defect with peripheral contrast in the upper lobe segmental artery, giving to the polymer appearance.